the pandemic really led to an acceleration of freelancing economy here in the Philippines. How much of a growth have we seen over the past two years? And should we expect that to be slowing down a bit, especially now that the economy is reopening? Good morning, and it's a pleasure to be here. I think we're definitely seeing really, really great trends in terms of the rise of freelancing in the Philippines. Even pre-pandemic, the Philippines was already one of the top five online outsourcing countries in the Philippines, largely, I think, because of our customer service orientation um, and our English language skills. In many ways, it's kind of mirrored the, the rise of the BPO industry in the Philippines mm. here, where essentially freelancers are providing online outsourcing services. And we continue to see that um, growing in the future as freelancers actually start to grow bigger. They're becoming SMEs. They are mm. investing in infrastructure. They're hiring others and they're ultimately becoming businesses. Sir, what type of uh, jobs are there today for freelancers? Is it still predominantly, you know, writing? You mentioned English language skills, editing, some teachers even, uh, mm. like myself, I still teach abroad. Give us what other types have, have the pandemic uh, brought into the form? Indeed, that's a great question. And traditionally, Filipino freelancers have been well known and in demand for virtual assistant services, uh, customer support services, and, uh, and writing. Uh, but one of the things we're starting to see is kind of a gradual um, escalation into higher value services. So we're seeing um, IT and mobile uh, programming. We're also seeing a number of uh, emerging uh, sectors in freelance that are content creators, right? Mm. And content creators can be both just writers, but also bloggers, vloggers, mm. and even those that create their own a channel on platforms like TikTok and uh, Kumu uh, mm -hmm. to, to basically be able to um, bring content to a wider audience. With that being said, are we seeing a more predominantly younger population demographic here for freelancers? Or are we also seeing a change in trend? And like, are we seeing more older people at least, or the older population also uh, dipping their feet into freelancing? I think it's mixed. So freelancing is very diverse and it really is starting to evolve. Um, used to be that many freelancers were uh, just considered for kind of lower value uh, services, but now the spectrum has really increased where even those with high value skills, very specialist skills are being called upon by global companies mm. to provide services on demand. And as um, you know, the pandemic has really accelerated digitization. Mm -hmm. It's also changed the mindset of many global companies who are now much more open to a distributed, remote, and global workforce. And I think that's a positive trend for Filipinos because it helps us be able to continue to promote our own uh, skills at the global stage. Mikael, I'm wondering, no, uh, for if, when you say freelancers, do you define it as a person that gets most or all of its income freelance? Or is it also some people that have normal day jobs mm -hmm. and do some things on the side? How you, do you distinguish between these two? Are they professional freelancers or is anyone with a side hustle considered a freelancer? That's a really great question. I think that freelancing can be kind of perceived as uh, you know, just purely gig work or purely mm -hmm. short term. But in fact, we have seen many freelancers um, take it to the next level, right? Uh, first, there are those that are freelancing full time. Then there are those who have ultimately become businesses. Mm -hmm. And when we mm -hmm. think about um, where the freelance jobs or gigs come from, I think this is also evolving. So um, there are global marketplace platforms like Upwork and Fiverr and online jobs that kind of provide a list of uh, gigs and freelance jobs that uh, free, uh, freelancers can, uh, can apply to. Uh, but then increasingly, you're also seeing Filipinos um, connect directly with international mm -hmm. clients. Mm -hmm. uh, they're finding their clients through platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn, right. um, and then starting to build their own brand and build their own company online. But which are the top source markets here in terms of country? I think that uh, in the Philippines, um, we serve a lot of, uh, 
uh, small businesses and emerging businesses in the U.S. and in mm. Europe. But increasingly, we're also seeing um, a lot of, uh, of clients uh, that have customers in Australia and also increasingly in Southeast Asia. So we're really starting to see a diversification and mm. branching out as, uh, you know, these Filipino freelancers are able to take their services international. Miguel, tell us about the partnership with Gcash. How easy is it to get on the platform, use Payoneer, earn in dollars, especially now where mm -hmm. the dollar is pretty strong. How does that work in terms of can I have different currencies in my account and then get it in peso? How seamless is that? This is one of the things that we're really excited about. Um, our partnership with Gcash has really enabled us to further empower Filipino freelancers to take control of their finances. Um, what we've done is create a direct integration between Payoneer and Gcash so that from within the Gcash app, you can actually view the balances that you have in different currencies uh, on your Payoneer account. You can then link it mm -hmm. and then ultimately transfer funds in a different currency to pesos in real time. Now, I think this is really, really mm -hmm. innovative because what this means is that you can then um, choose when you want to mm -hmm. transact and then ultimately be able to receive it in real time. And that power really allows you to be able to access your funds faster and then ultimately spend locally. So we're continuing to do a lot with Gcash uh, and we look forward to the ongoing partnership that we have with them. Of, of course, we're seeing the peso now at a new, I mean, it's the weakest yet, at least, of course. Uh, how do you think is that going to further accelerate the freelancing economy? And how do you see that as well pushing your numbers here in terms of number of clients using the so platform? That, that, that definitely could be a, a tailwind for Filipinos, right? One of mm -hmm. the things that we are, in fact, seeing is that Filipinos uh, are able to continue to grow their businesses, um, hire others, and the, the, the strength of the peso could potentially mean that they could use it uh, to be able to, to do more with the money that they have. Uh, it could also attract others to freelancing. Uh, as you see, um, freelancing could potentially be very lucrative. Uh, in a recent uh, uh, report uh, that we released with Gcash, you do see that freelancers with both local and international clients uh, can earn up to $22 an hour, depending on what they do. And that, that, that definitely is a strong motivation to be able to not only get into freelancing, but to um, succeed and flourish in this field. And Miguel, finally, give us the numbers here. How many people are using the platform and what are your targets here? How many, what is the amount of freelance percentage, you know, mm -hmm. in terms of workers here in the Philippines that is ripe for the picking? That's a really good question. I think that here in the Philippines, um, we estimate that there are over 1.5 million Filipino freelancers. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there are various stages. Some are just starting out. Some have been established freelancers for a long time. We see continued uh, uh, growth and uh, a real cause for optimism, uh, primarily because, as I mentioned earlier, right, the trend that we're really seeing is not just a diversification of freelancing from, you know, one type of service provided to a much broader spectrum of offerings, including content, mm -hmm. uh, but also the fact that they are going from, you know, being a freelancer on a marketplace mm -hmm. on a short term gig to ultimately connecting directly with um, with international clients in a more B2B flow. And in fact, this is something which Payoneer is seeing uh, as part of you know, our growing business is the strength of B2B and it's growing very uh, meaningfully year on year.